The next fair dealing exception that I want to deal with is criticism or review. Again, these words, criticism and review, are not defined in the Act. They're given their ordinary dictionary meaning. So in De Garis, Justice Beaumont explained that criticism is used in the sense of the act or art of analysing and judging the quality of a work, or the act of passing judgment as to the merits of something. Criticism includes all kinds of criticism, not just literary criticism. Um, review, however, is limited in its sense that it is the output of criticism. A critique is a process, and a review is the result of that process of passing judgment about the merits of a particular thing. So, for example, in Commonwealth and John Fairfax in 1980, the court had to determine whether or not the publishing of leaked official documents was um, was permissible under the exception for criticism or review or under the exception for news reporting. These, in a, um, in, in a context that should be familiar in modern times, were consisted of cables that, diplomatic cables that contained materials that were embarrassing for the government, materials that the government did not want to see reproduced. So in this case, uh, the when the cables were published in their entirety, the court had to determine whether or not they were published for the purposes of even news reporting or criticism or review. The court in this case found that they were published because they were interesting in their own right. They were not published with accompanying critique. They were not published in a way that uh, passed judgment on the content of the cables, and therefore Fairfax could not rely on the criticism or review exception. Interestingly, in a postscript, Fairfax ended up, um, or I think it was a journalist at hand, ended up republishing the cables in the context of a larger book that gave in its own words, a detailed assessment of the banning of the publication of the cables. And in this case, that was clearly both news reporting and criticism and review and publication in that context was permissible. So this is actually a really quite difficult and complicated task for courts to uh, undertake. It's always a question of facts uh, and it will depend upon all the circumstances of the case. So in the panel, for example, a number of federal court judges came to conflicting decisions about whether or not clips taken by Channel 10 from Channel 9 and showed on their um, satirical news program were fair dealing, either for the purposes of news reporting or the purposes of criticism or review. So Network 10 ran a weekly panel satirical news program where they would republish broadcasts made by other networks in front of a panel in order to make fun of the, of the clips or the subject matter in the clips. The courts really struggled with identifying whether or not the purposes were for the legitimate purposes set out in the act or whether the purposes were really just to make fun to have a comedic effect. Whether they were published for the purposes of giving a critique or whether they were just published in their own right because they were funny. So Justice Conti at first instance explained that criticism and review are words of pretty wide and indefinite scope and should be interpreted liberally. They should also, importantly, extend not just to criticising the content of the copyright material itself, but to criticising the thoughts underlying the expression of copyright works or subject matter. So overall, criticism and review requires the passing of judgment. It, has to, it may be strongly expressed, but it has to be judgment. And providing that that judgment is not a pretense, is it's genuine judgment, and it's not published for some other purpose, then it doesn't have to be balanced in order to be fair. At the full federal court level, uh, Justice Healy provided the warning for interpretation of uh, criticism and review. And his honour said that um, the appropriate test to apply is whether the program incorporating the infringing material is a genuine piece of criticism or review, or is it something else? 
such as an attempt to dress up infringement of another's copyright in the guise of criticism and so profit unfairly from another's work. He quotes Lord Denning and says, It is not fair dealing for a rival in trade to take copyright material and use it for its own benefit. So there's a scepticism with which the courts approach the question of criticism and review and indeed the fair dealing exceptions generally. So the court in this case, in a few conflicting judgments at the federal court level and in the full federal court level, had a lot of trouble coming to agreement on the facts, characterizing the, um, whether or not the use of the clips was for genuine criticism or review. It was not always clear whether they were published for those purposes or whether they were published just to make fun of the source networks or the source material. So we get some really hard to interpret examples. So for example, um, there was a clip of Glenn McGrath ignoring the Prime Minister John Howard uh, when, he was a, when Glenn McGrath was awarded a um, medal. And the panel took this and uh, um, used it in the context of showing Glenn McGrath snubbing the Prime Minister. And the Phil Federal Court had to work out whether or not this was a newsworthy event and whether or not there was something really critical going on in the way in which the panel were discussing the clip. And they came to the conclusion that this was an instance where it was neither newsworthy nor was it a proper critique of the content of the clip. So it wasn't a permissible use of the material. Similarly, um, there was a clip of the Prime Minister uh, singing uh, Happy Birthday on the Midday Show. And the court, in the end, came to the conclusion that this was not newsworthy in itself, and neither was it used really for the purposes of criticism or, re or review of the content. Really, it was used as part of a broader um, critique or savaging of the show and the host, Carrie Ann Kennelly. So the result of the, um, the panel case and other authorities that we have in Australia is that it's sometimes very difficult to work out whether or not something is legitimately for the purposes of criticism or review. In this instance case, um, the unfortunate result is that Network 10 can't produce a show like the panel. This is a classic example where a competitor is unlikely to issue a license to a rival network in order to allow it to make fun of it. Channel 9 is not likely to issue Network 10 with a license to make fun of its broadcasts. So there's no commercial license that can be obtained usually. But neither could Network 10 safely rely on the defences, either of criticism or review, or parody or, oh, sorry, parody or satire doesn't exist yet, couldn't rely on the defences of criticism or review or news reporting to safely create the show. The result is, this is a show that had substantial value, but because of the way the copyright law operates, it's not a show that could actually be aired and it, had, it was eventually axed by the network. So this brings us, as I uh, just alluded to, to the fair dealing for parody or satire defense. This is a new defense introduced in 2006. We don't have any litigation to examine yet, but we might find some inspiration in the US fair use defense where there's a lot of jurisprudence about parody or satire. Be careful though, in the US, only parody is permissible. So the courts define parody as making fun of the source material or the subject matter that it depicts. The courts define satire as using source material to make a general claim about society. So you end up in the US with really quite tortured analyses of whether or not the defendant is making fun, making a point about uh, the source material itself, or whether they're making a more general point about society. So you see, for example, the court held one, one of the US courts held that um, using the rhyme and rhythm and structure of a Cat in the Hat song to make fun of the O.J. Simpson trial was not a parody of Cat in the Hat. It was a satire of society and particularly a satire of the processes through which O.J. Simpson was being tried. In Australia, we don't have that distinction. It's one of the few instances where Australian law is actually more generous to users than US law. 
we introduced fair dealing for parody of satire in 2006. And there's good reason to th think that it would operate to fix many of the problems that we saw in the panel, where we couldn't quite work out whether or not the uses were criticism or review or news reporting, many of those uses may well be parody or satire. So in this way, parody or satire does actually fix a gap in Australian law. And you'll see the debates, if you look back to the legislative history, that explain a sense of frustration, actually, that Australia, a nation that prides itself on um, its parody and satire, its larrikin nature, didn't have an exception to enable these kinds of uses, the kinds of uses that the Network 10 wanted to make in the panel under its copyright laws. So we've seen quite an expansion of defenses in that time.